The documentation program, you know, I've been working on it as the documentation program technical lead for about over four years now. And so, you know, I feel like we're hitting our stride, but it just, the growth of the project has really made us um, question resourcing, ask how we can do this in more innovative ways. And so what I'm going to do today is talk through, you know, what is the doc team? How are we going to shift as the scale of all the projects keeps growing and growing? And um, talk about our accomplishments last release as well as our goals for QO. So let's go ahead and hit the next slide for the composition of the team. So the OpenSec doc team, you know, we have about 20 core reviewers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the contribution stats in another slide. But these are the kinds of things we can offer to teams. Um, we are information architects. A lot of times we're figuring out where the information best sits. We're very good at audience analysis. And we figure out, okay, when, when does a cloud administrator need to know this? Um, is this somebody who actually wants high availability? Or is this an audience that's concerned more with running applications on top of OpenStack? And so we're writing community docs, but also providing that overall view, the, the 10,000 foot view of what needs to go on docs.openstack.org. You know, we also have tool builders in our community. And these are people who have really done a great job of making sure that docs do continuous integration. Docs are reviewed just like code. Um, we have talks tests against documentation. And I feel like, man, we're really leading the field um, as far as technical documentation um, and automation. Um, we have ways to scrape code to get the latest and greatest. And I'm just I'm constantly um, impressed with some of the ways that we are just really making this technical, technical documentation. Um, we also have reviewers, and, and I have to brag a little bit um, on like OpenStack Dash Daniel's repo. We have the quickest turnaround of any OpenStack project, so we review very quickly. Now we might review a lot, and we'll definitely be sort of the the um, consistency police, and and make sure that that quality and accuracy are um, the highest priorities when getting a doc through our um, review queue. And then lastly, and I, I kind of have this last on purpose, um, we provide writers. And there are people working at different companies who maintain upstream documentation in addition to documentation for OpenStack products. So this is where um, we're working on building out the team and also trying to find ways to coach the individual project teams to bring writers to um, the OpenStack upstream work. So let's go ahead into the next slide is the Juno accomplishments. And I love looking at the stats. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty telling that we had 238 um, individual doc contributors. And I think this speaks to the long tail of the knowledge that you need for OpenStack um, itself. There's a lot of um, very detailed oriented things, especially when you get into driver documentation and a lot of the plugin architecture that we have. And so even though we may only have you know, probably less than 20 core reviewers, uh, we need all the doc contributors we can get, especially as we've gone you know, from two projects to 17 that need documentation. Um, you know, we have a lot of bugs in our backlog and, and probably you know, honestly should have even more considering the use of something like a doc impact flag where a developer can mark in a commit message, yes, this change will affect end user docs, will affect configuration, will affect a deployer who wants to put this into production. Um, and so you know, that's actually one of the things I'll talk about that we want to do for Kilo. Um, I tell you what though, you know, over 2,200 commits and 8,400 reviews, that's pretty awesome. And the docs.openstack.org site itself um, is really uh, a, a place for people to come to get the information that's being shown through our page views, through our unique page views. Um, and the IceHouse documentation led the way with the most page views. So we know that people want release documentation that is in sync with the code, um, that is uh, keeping up with the huge scale that OpenStack has become. So what were the major things we got done? You know, I think it's great that the documentation program has a section in the release notes for what we got done in any given release. And one of the big ones was this architecture design guide. And so that's aimed at people who want to figure out what to do with OpenStack, and it provides lots of use cases from you know, just compute to just storage 
um, all the way up to hybrid clouds, massive scale clouds. Um, and so that was done in a five-day book sprint funded by the foundation. Thank you guys very much. These are uh, a great way for us to get experts in the community together and their willingness to give their knowledge back to the community is, is what is going to sustain the docs um, over time. We also did a lot of standardization across um, four OpenStack installation guides. And so, you know, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we write for Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE, and Red Hat Fedora CentOS. So there are, um, you know, little variations. And so what we did was we really sat down and said, what can we make exactly the same across all these distributions? And that makes maintenance easier. Um, and you know the testing on that is also a huge undertaking. Um, so that's you know that's a huge uh, bit of work that we did last release. Um, we also started splitting out um, documents for uh, that are very specialized, like the high availability guide. You probably have to know a lot about Pacemaker, a lot about MySQL, um, and not necessarily OpenStack. So so what we've done is found teams that can specifically do reviews on that kind of content. And the same thing for the security guide. They had a big push this past release where they did reviews, log doc bugs, fix doc bugs, and kind of trying to gel the team around this specialty knowledge. Um, we've also been moving the long form API reference documents into the project specs repositories. Um, and I'm about halfway done. The larger projects we still need to get in there, but um, that also speaks to the complex complexity of something like Nova and Neutron um, and their APIs. And so honestly, you know, one of the interesting stats I didn't put on the slide but, but that I found as I kept digging is you know, we document almost 750 API calls with you know, Git put post plus URI. So it, you know, and then if you get into counting like the headers and stuff, the numbers are really big. So it, it's important that we find ways to streamline the maintenance on API reference information and still give people the information they need for what should I, you know, what should I be doing around auth? What should I be doing for rate limiting? What should I be doing um, for these kind of calls? And so I, you know, I see myself working a lot with the API working group and the application ecosystem groups. Um, as we continue to work on useful API documentation um, for those people running apps on top of OpenStack and for our deployers who are supporting their own users. Um, and then honestly, before, just things we do uh, for the documentation. We've added uh, more information to um, the user guide about Trove, um, the database service. Uh, both for end users and for admin users um, running that, and also um, updated the command line reference. That's another guide that we automate um, using the strings out of the help files. Um, lots of updates to the cloud administrator guide, and then another automated guide to the configuration reference. And you know, it's that automation that lets us keep up with the code. It, it's the way that we can work within the community. Um, and, and apply uh, a lot of the community and collaborative techniques to docs. Well, let's go ahead and do the next slide where I'll talk about the Kilo goals. So, you know, this is basically our mission, and um, I, I try to, you know, really think about our users, really think about our deployers, think about the audience, um, and at the same time, try to provide quality, accurate um, documentation, keeping up with the code. One of the things we're going to do is minimize the driver documentation. So, you know, when Kyle spoke, he had this long bulleted list, and each of those needs documentation. But what we're thinking is that we don't actually need that directly in upstream. The real step-by-step -step stuff can be maintained on the vendor's own site. And so we're going to focus on upstream docs, documenting the open source ones on docs.opensector.org. And then vendor plugins will certainly be documented to the point where this is what you have to do on the OpenStack side. But then for the real step-by-step -step configuration, they can go and maintain it on their own, um, do their own docs domain. And I think, you know, I think that lifts a lot of the burden for drivers, um, documentation people as well. And then something really exciting coming up, and I'll show um, a couple of screenshots in the last couple of slides, is a new web design. So the foundation gave us um, some of their awesome web designers. Um, shout out to Wes and Todd for um, giving us a new web design with you know, a lot of the requirements around um, we want to look more at page-based design instead of always having to have a book. And so that's really exciting, and, and we'll have a blueprint up about that this week that I want to share. 
Um, as always, we'll optimize uh, so that we have automatic builds so that we scrape the code as much as possible, uh, especially for reference information. And then you know, some of the other things that we just do as a doc team is support the project teams, um, keep the API reference up to date, um, review things as they come in, and you know, bring conventions across all of OpenStack. Um, you know, one thing that the infrastructure team has been doing recently is a, a doc sprint around their new self-service guide for infrastructure inside of OpenStack. And so, you know, we were able to write conventions. Andreas Jager is an amazing contributor and can look at these things across projects to um, enable other teams to get the docs done that they need. So let's look at the roadmap in the next slide. Um, and I, you know, <clears throat> go ahead and look at this in categories. Quality, tools, experience. Um, we always have to maintain high quality documentation. And, and that is part of the initiative that we do is we just maintain what's there. Um, sometimes we trim it out. Sometimes we scope it a little differently. Um, but we're always doing this monthly, daily. We can get 50 catches in in a day some days. And so that's kind of my call to action to everyone is just understand that this is ongoing work that always has to be done. And we absolutely need people to bring you know, writers, communicators, people who can get, you know, bridge that gap to deployers, to end users, and work on our bug um, backlog. We actually held a successful bug squash um, day last week. And it wasn't, we did a little bit of a change on the whole idea of a bug squash where we did a bug triage day. So instead of fixing the bugs, we actually went in and wrote down, this, these are the exact steps that you can take to um, fix this doc bug. And I think that will help people who just kind of want to do that walk-up contribution. You know, they're sitting home, full belly after Thanksgiving dinner, and just want something kind of mindless to work on. So that's the goal with this kind of thing. Um, and, and I think that will help with our backlog. Our bug backlog is large because of the growth of the projects, and the projects are going to have to bring the resources that, that keep up with their, their documentation impact as they add features. Um, we are working very hard to get these many, many of the source docs to RST format instead of docbook. And I can hear the cheering already in the background. Uh, but the idea is that we want to make it fast and easy for people to contribute and you know, no specialized knowledge, no white coat um, kind of understanding of documentation. Make it as accessible as possible. Make it easy to submit doc bugs, and that's part of this new redesign as well. We've always had a doc bug on every page, but we want to make it very easy to get to. And then um, you know, under experience, I feel like our site has shown its age, and it's about a three-year-old design, and so it really is time to, to bring it into um, a more page-based layout. And um, what we're going to do is a phased approach to migrate certain documentation to RST using a new sync template. And so that leads us into, you know, I hope to have much of that migration done by the Kilo release date, but it's, it's a ton of work. So let's look at the new landing page on the next slide. And this is only about half a screenshot, but the idea is to make sure that we match the www.openstack.org header and then offer these um, documents that you can use um, as certain release targets. Um, we have different language documentation. And, and so offer this listing so that people can find out, oh, this is the doc for me. This is relevant to what I am trying to get done here. Um, and do a better job of seeing relationships between pages. Um, make sure that the output itself is much easier to read on your iPad, on your mobile device, on your tablet, um, on your Nexus 6 that we're all getting for Christmas, right? Just make sure that all of the entire docs.org site is very accessible. Um, and so on the next slide, I show the actual page redesign um, with a lot of the features that we already had, but also this idea that here's all the things you can get to um, once you're on a landing page. Um, and also the things you can do, make sure people know this page wasn't updated um, in the last month. It was updated in the last six months. That's pretty telling for how up to date a page is. Um, make sure that people know every bit of docs.openstack.org can be edited using the um, review system that we have in place. 
And then um, I'm trying to get towards an every page is page one. Get away from the idea of books being a very linear thing and let people land anywhere because I totally believe that everyone's front page is Google.com and that is the entry to the site. Um, you know, we're keeping a lot of the features we had before, um, RSS feed on updates, reporter doc bug, um, and a lot of the syntax highlighting that we had um, previously. So um, just trying to, you know, get this really accessible, get it into source format that people are really um, excited to just walk up and, and do minor edits, do quick typo fixes and also um, work on content that's relevant to the audiences we're trying to reach. So next slide, I want to just end with, you know what, let's do this. Contact me. If you want to get involved with documentation, we need um, people from just doc reviewers who are subject matter experts who know some certain part of OpenStack. Um, let me know if you're interested in doc tooling. Let me know if you're interested in sync templates. Let me know if you're interested in doing big reviews and quality checking. All of these things have a place in the OpenStack documentation, and I'm totally available in IRC. I'm happy to set up phone calls with people as well. And uh, you know, even over a break last week, we had a person trying to get through the installation and was wanting to work on the guide if it needed work, and so we worked with him on Twitter, of all things. So feel free to reach out to me um, and just hear my call to the community that we need documentation and there's lots of ways to contribute. 